protein. Everybody is constantly talking about protein. How many of you in the chat box here, you started eating a plant-based diet, you made some adjustments, and somebody asked you, where do you get your protein? Okay. It's really funny how that question happens at almost every juncture of making changes. You, somebody goes vegetarian, where do you get your protein? Somebody goes vegan, where do you go? You get your protein. Somebody goes really low fat, plant-based, whole food vegan, where do you get your protein? Somebody decides to eat a fruit-based diet, where do you get your protein? It's the question just keeps on coming back over and over and over again. Now, just think about a few logical things. We're just going to do a couple logical things here. Then I'm going to share an article with you. Then we're going to talk some recipes and then we're going to go have a great weekend. All right. Think about this. Have you ever met somebody who was diagnosed with a protein deficiency? Do you know that person? Okay. What was, what was the name of the condition that the doctor actually diagnosed them with? Okay. And usually the answer is you don't, you don't know anybody who's actually diagnosed with a protein deficiency. This is, this is a, essentially a non-issue. It's it, to actually have a true, true, legitimate medical grade protein deficiency, be kwashiorkor, and that is when there is not enough calories being consumed. Okay. All right. So it's you have to just think logically about this. How much, how crazy people are about this topic, yet people don't have a, a disease of protein deficiency. We, we have is a, a, a world, like in general, again, logically speaking, as a country, we're overweight. People have excess weight. Yet people are eating these diets, high fat, high protein, in order to solve their problems. When protein deficiency is non-existent and people are overweight. Like the logic, it's, it's just not there. It's just not there. If you want the, the, all the deep science, 800 references, the whole picture explained in our book here. Now, um, one, I do want to actually read a specific section here. We're going to talk about this specific section. I'm going to try and answer questions. So any questions you have in general, put them in the chat box. Okay. So, um, let me know. Okay. All right. So leucine is in this section about what, what is, what are in animal foods? Okay. That's what's in this section. All right. And then leucine is one of the components. It says, meat and dairy products contain high amounts of leucine, an amino acid that activates a high energy biochemical pathway known as mTOR in your beta cells, muscle, liver, adipose tissue, and brain. Okay, so protein is made up of amino acids. So if we're going to walk away from the show learning one key thing. You're going to remember one thing. Protein is a big topic. Like We could write a whole book on that topic. As a matter of fact, one of our friends has. It's called Proteinaholic by Dr. Garth Davis. Um, but I want you to understand that leucine is an amino acid. Protein is made up of a bunch of amino acids, okay? Um, and leucine is a problem. Excess leucine is a problem. People are not talking about this. You may or may not have heard of this, but I want you to know it. And that's, that's something you're going to hopefully make some changes. Okay, wait a minute. When I'm consuming foods and trying to make sure I'm getting enough protein, here's a good reason not to get it from meat and dairy products, okay? Because they're very high in leucine. So frequently eating meat and dairy products can overstimulate the mTOR pathway in these tissues. And when this happens, the tissues enter a prolonged high energy state in which many biochemical pathways go awry. The pathways that go awry include fatty acid accumulation in muscle and liver, chronic liver glucose export. So this is having your liver dumping too much glucose into your bloodstream and causing blood glucose dysfunction. Increased insulin secretion. We don't want excess insulin secretion. We want the appropriate amount of insulin being secreted. Increased beta cell reproduction. We don't want excess beta cells. And eventual beta cell suicide, right? You're overworking your beta cells, you got problems. Leucine promotes more insulin production than any other amino acid. And some scientists believe that increased leucine 
Intake from both meat and dairy products stimulates beta cells to chronically overproduce insulin. Now, to be fair, some plants also have leucine, right? So this is an amino acid that you're going to get from your whole plant foods, but it's an appropriate amount. It's balanced. Okay. That's, if that's the second thing you're going to remember from today's show is whole foods from nature have a balance beyond our comprehension. Okay. So number one, you're going to walk away from the show saying that excess leucine is a problem. Okay. And number two, nature provides a balance in the proper foods for humans. All right. So Per 100 grams of weight, the leucine content between commonly eaten animal and plant foods is dramatically different, suggesting that even modest amounts of animal products can put you at risk for excess leucine intake. Four ounces of beef contains 3,200 milligrams of leucine, and a quarter cup of Gouda cheese contains 1,600, whereas a cup of corn contains 410 one cup of rice contains 430 and one cup of potatoes contains 250. Okay. So guys, two things today, excess leucine is a problem. Whole plant foods have nutrients in an incredible balance, which we cannot even comprehend. So with that said, I want to offer you guys a chance to get our foolproof natural recipe guide. All you got to do is in the comments, write the word guide, and we will get this guide to you. The whole purpose of us putting together this guide is so you have examples of recipes that have the perfect amount of protein, the perfect amount of fat, the perfect amount of carbohydrate for reversing insulin resistance, okay? This guide is so powerful. We've put a lot of work into this guide. It's beautiful and it's full of whole food recipes that optimize your insulin sensitivity. That's the name of the game. It's a little bit of a challenge, right? We wanna challenge you. And a lot of people struggle with eating healthy at dinner time. So a lot of these are designed to be either lunch or dinner meals. And I'm gonna do nutrition information. Here we go, let's go back and look at that nutrition information for any one of these, all right? So 17 grams of protein per serving in this recipe, five grams of fat, 80 grams of carbohydrate, 405 calories. You're welcome to have more if you want. You, you, you could have more calories. But no matter how you spin it, the caloral nutrient ratio is ideal here. Now, if you're commenting guide on YouTube, you're going to have to go and write on Facebook, email us, or DM us. I see a lot of you people on YouTube. All right? Okay? So this is really important here. If you want to reverse insulin resistance, you, it's, it's incredibly important to reduce your fat intake and you also want to reduce your protein intake. Excess protein is problematic when it comes to blood glucose and, and insulin levels, okay? So as you can see, well, I'm sure Bess will show us a little more of these pictures here, but these are beautiful, delicious, nutritious recipes and they are designed to keep you satisfied and help you lose weight, okay? That's also a big part of the game here, all right? If you want to reduce your you know, insulin levels, if you want to reduce your blood glucose levels, a huge part of the process is letting go of excess weight, 